Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video here at Table 1. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're going to be playing with the dreaded Iron Hands EX, this time combined with Baxcalibur to be able to power it up quickly and have that really cool two prize option to take down opponents. Now, before we wanted to focus on Cross Switcher and canceling Cologne with Radiant Greninja in order to accomplish that and have that possible threat. Now we are going to focus on Iron Hands EX to deal with single prize Pokemon and Chen Pao EX to deal with rule box Pokemon that offer multiple prize cards. Everything else about the deck is pretty, pretty standardized from what we've seen Chen Pao evolve into since the World Championships, the pretty same 60. This is the same core, right? The deck works basically the same, same amount of item cards, a little bit of extra uh, energy and the Iron Hand splashed in there, along with Counter Catcher and Escape Rope in place of the Cross Switchers. So we lose the direct way to target down an opponent, but we gain the guaranteed counter catcher if we are behind in prize cards, which this game, this deck usually goes toe to toe against opponents. So I think it will definitely be useful and we will definitely find opportunities to be able to use it. So let's jump into some games. For the channel, you can use code TAILMON to get 5% off at Potan store for your online codes. 10% off for your sealed product at Flipside Gaming and 10% off on your aluminum accessories at TC Evolutions. Or if you're looking to buy singles or sleeves, you can fill up your cart and close the tab. Then click on the affiliate link in the description and check out. That way you can support the channel over at TCG Player, Card Market and Dragon Shield. ¿Eres de México y necesitas cartas de Pokémon? Busca Hyper Beam Cards en Facebook e Instagram. Y si estás en Tijuana, búscalos en el local C27 en el Centro Comercial Lotai. All right, so our opponent will go first and a decent start. I feel like I shouldn't play down the Iron Hands until I absolutely must as a way to like not have it be a liability and also so my opponent maybe doesn't expect it. Not many decks left that choose to go first, I think, overall in the format. Uh, not entirely sure, but I do feel like there's a lot of advantages to going second. And I just realized I actually 100% should have benched the Iron Hands EX in case I was up against the Iron Valiant, right? I completely forgot about that. I 100% should have done that. Okay. So, pretty sure the Toad Scroll prevents me from getting energies back, if I'm not mistaken. Now, that is quite the start for my opponent. Not bad at all. I honestly have no idea what the Starmie even does. So, I will need to be extra, extra, extra careful with, um, with what I end up um, with uh, like targeting down that thing. It's basically what I need to do. And I'm only playing counter catchers, right? So I just need to be careful with my energies, that's for sure. So play the escape rope because I do want to have an attachment on the chin pal. Maybe just attaching energy would have been fine and keeping that star you in the active. All right. So I'm gonna thin this two energies out. We do have the lightning available, a counter catcher. So scary, scary toad scroll, I think. We'll see. So I'm gonna draw first. Okay, there's Irida. So that's how I'm going to establish our good friend Frigibax. However, I can get back Scalibur and battle the IP pass, and then if my opponent doesn't exactly, I you know. I'm pretty set up, right? Which is really cool. Now, Hizuian Samurai DX is uh, scary for sure. Yeah, definitely, definitely scary. But I think we'll manage. All right, still plenty of energy available in case the Toad Scroll does hit the field. I also potentially threaten Greninja Snipe, right? And Stormy does have 90 HP, so that's fantastic. What does you? What do you do? If you put two damage counters on one of your one's Pokemon, if you place any damage counters in this way, this card, this Pokemon, all attached cards. Okay, well, never mind. 
<laughs> that army is probably gonna get utilized. Okay, that ancient... Wait, was it ancient? Energy booster? So there must be a Roaring Moon, yeah. There must be a Roaring Moon somewhere. I'm guessing this will establish the Toad Scroll. So, maybe I'm misremembering. Now I've had my doubt. Does the Toad Scroll... St I know it stops you from recovering stuff from the discard pile. Is it every card? Or is it just trainers and items? Or like trainers? I honestly don't remember. Alright, well, my poor Pidoof is now gone. Due to that Starmie and the Samurott. If my opponent doesn't attach any energy, though, I think we will be a okay. Uh, annoying path to a peak, however. Very, very annoying. Extremely annoying, in fact. Okay, so. With that, I do have a knockout on the Radiant Greninja. I kind of would like to establish <clears throat> our good friend Bidoof again. But yeah, I think I just take the KO here. Is Starmie only when it, it's on the bench? No. So my opponent would have been able to do this regardless. Alright, well. I mean, they haven't done anything else, right? So, should be fine. Well, it's not so fine, actually, because my hand's not really great. Counter catcher would have been nice the previous turn. Don't expect my opponent to take a KO here, so the counter catcher is not gonna be useful. So I rely on my top deck. Would have been awesome to take that KO with Iron Hands, as the energy would have stayed put. <clears throat> now I do have a good amount of top decks. Um, Pokestop would be fantastic. Any of the three Iridas or the Iona would be pretty great as well. Definitely in a little bit of trouble though. Losing that bit of is a big deal because I had the ultra, right? Ready to go. All right, we do see a Roaring Moon. We see a boss as well onto the fridge backs instead of the back caliber, which is surprising. Nice. Okay, well, definitely sort of regret not establishing the bit of last turn, but I mean, that was literally impossible for me to know, right? So we're just gonna establish the other Bidoof once again. I won't be able to take a KO this turn. I think it's perfectly fine. My opponent clearly in not such a great spot. I don't think attaching the energy ever matters right here. So we're gonna pass and then we have the B-roll ready and the B-roll will just solve all of our problems, <laughs> quite literally. It will solve every single problem that I have. So a lot of improvisation right now, but that's okay. We do see the pass. Okay, well, I don't even need to ultra ball for the B-Rel. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. I fully expect to be ahead in the price cards. I will still keep the Iron Hands. Well, actually, you know what? I'm gonna discard the Iron Hands because I do have Super Rats. And then I'm gonna fail this. And then we will go ahead and draw four. I do have Supra to recover, so I should be fine. Okay, well, no, no Poke Stop, no Superior Energy Retrieval, so not great. We're just gonna chill the for 10. If I attach Retreated, there's no point. I mean, clearly my opponent's not doing anything at all, so it's fine, but weird. Weird, weird, weird. Yep, yeah, just draw pass. So we're basically playing solitaire at this point. I do find this appear energy retrieval very nicely. So 
we're just gonna do this and we're gonna go ahead and touch. And I will be able to get a KO. We'll also be able to draw three cards, which is pretty fantastic. <laughs> Took a little while there, PTCG Live. All right, there's the Pokestop as well. Don't really need anything else. Um, if I lose Iridas, it's completely fine. <clears throat> or Pokestops. Super Rod is a good card to find. And we can also Shiver Chill. I should retreat first and use Shiver Chill, that's for sure, just to thin that extra energy. No reason not to. I'm gonna go ahead and conceal cards as well. <clears throat> All right. Not great for the next turn, however. Um, I might just end up using like Super Rod a bunch, but it's okay. Yeah, I have another Pokestop. Can draw more cards. I'm getting two prizes here. There's that. Pokemon as a threat. Maybe I should have gone after the Toad School this turn. It doesn't change my prize map, but it does allow me to potentially stop my opponent from. Um, from setting up the Toad Scroll, if it does work like I think it does. But maybe it just doesn't work like that. We do see the Clara, which of course I don't get shown the cards, right? That get put back into the hand or the, yep. Yeah. So it was probably, it must have been two energies and then it was the Starmie and then I don't know what else it was. But yeah, they said, <laughs> I mean, they might have fixed Suprad, but clearly, they did not fix. Oh, it was the Greninja. Clearly they did not fix everything that's related to discarding and recovering, right? Which is like, that's the concept that you need to work on. It's not just Super Rod. You need to fix the concept that PCG Live does not understand of putting things back into the deck. You should always reveal those cards to your opponent. You're not even revealing them. They're public information so you have to show them your opponent whenever you play a card you have to be very clear that that is what you are putting back but anyways i had someone argue like oh but the card doesn't state that you need to reveal them so ptgl is not wrong it's like i've been playing for 20 years it's wrong yeah. <laughs> do not argue with me it's wrong all right so i do need five energies and that's a beautiful top deck Gonna keep one chimp on the deck just because. You know? And then I'll go ahead and rare candy. Why? Why? Why do you make me pick? Oh, there's two. Never mind. That's my bad. There are two. There was actually a reason for me to pick. Alright. <laughs> I have so much like uh against PTCGL, and I think it's easy to tell. So this game, we're just winning it because we're up against a non-meta, not very good deck, and we are just doing Chen Pao things, right? Um, so yeah. Once again, I hope I don't regret this. I hope I don't regret not KOing that Toad Scroll, Toad Scroll, whatever its name is. I, have, I just have this feeling. I don't want to grab my phone and check. I just have this feeling that maybe that's going to stop me from recovering energies. And that's why it's being tacked in decks. I just have this nagging feeling that that's why. And I'm going to lose despite being at one prize card because I'm just going to run out of energies. I really hope that's not the case, but we'll see. I would not be surprised if it is. Will it actually hit the board though? Dark patch, if you get a KO that's fine. Do you have a switching guard? You do not seem like you do. <clears throat> So they must only play like a 1-1 one, one Toad Scroll, right? And I have this appear for the four energies for the KO. But I'm generally wondering what the Toad Scroll does. This whole game revolves around Toad Scroll. I'm gonna search it up. Whilst we wait for my opponent to pass and for me to win. 
I mean, that must be the only reason. Why they're still in the game, right? Toad scroll. Cards in your opponent's discard pile can't be put into their hand by an effect of your opponent's abilities or trainer cards. Okay, so it is um, cards going back into the hand, which means I can't um, I can't super add energies back, right? Which that would be just as good. So it would suck if my opponent did get a KO here um, and had established the Toad Scroll. It definitely would suck. But it's fine. They mm -hmm. never got it. I did have to double super rod, but it would have taken like a little bit of maneuvering in order to um, to accomplish <clears throat> the last KO. I did have time, right? I definitely had time to pull it off, but would have been interesting to see it and how that would have changed the dynamic. So yeah, it makes sense that that card is there. Um, I've seen it being played in Charizard which also makes sense because it helps against the Chenpa matchup, which is of course a not a very good one, right? So it does make a little sense. But anyways, we won this one. Nothing, uh, like it wasn't a difficult match, but the deck worked pretty fine. Let's see if we can work again. All right, so I did choose to go first, which I'm still very unsure overall. We have a pretty decent hand for sure. And if you're going first, you don't need to bench more than one Pokemon. If you're going second, now you definitely have to consider benching more than one because of the possibility of Iron Valiant donking you. If you have a big Pokemon, maybe you don't have to worry about it, but overall, you probably want to be at least careful with it. Okay, so we could just tell Scar Ninja. I feel like these two are just a more important duo we see Gumfe. i immediately fear the worst in terms of um, <clears throat> immediately fear the worst in terms of uh, turbo greninja ko my fridge back so that's why i'm protecting it and then also go ahead and pitch the iron hands it should prove to be very useful against these Gumfe's. And put a lot of pressure onto my opponent. It is important though that I cannot attach the lightning energy, I mean the water energy from hand to the chin power right now. Because obviously Backscaler allows you to attach water energies as much as you want, but it does not allow you to attach lightning energies as much as you want. Now that Roxanne would have indicated Giratina, the Fog Crystal, probably means this is Sablesard. Which, yeah, all right. Well, 100% <laughs> confirmation. I feel like if I manage to establish Iron Hands, I should absolutely dis destroy this deck, right? Okay, wow. This is... Pretty darn good. I'm pretty darn lucky too. All right. So I'm gonna discard the VIP pass and one water. Gonna go ahead and get the Backscalibur. I'll Irida for the Ultra Wolf or P Barrel next turn. Gonna go ahead and evolve. Gonna go ahead and attach. I will bench the other Frigibax and then I will simply KO the Face. So I'm gonna get a price card, I'm gonna get a top deck, and then I'll be able to Irida for an Ultra Wall to evolve into the Bidoof. Now, my opponent would need a lot to get to 10 and get a two price turn. It's not impossible, but it feels really, really, really difficult. And I will say, getting one price card doesn't help me too much in the grand scheme of things. By benching the Frigibax, I also do not threaten Greninja. Which is fine, less than ideal, but fine still. And on paper, next turn is when using Iron Hands would be safest. I don't foresee myself using Iron Hands next turn though. Seems really difficult. 
All right, we do see an escape rope. So <laughs> my opponent doing this actually immediately allows me to, assuming they attack with Kremlin, right? This allows me to now attack with Greninja, which I am more than okay with. I do need a few cards to pull that off, but I will take them, especially if I can eliminate double Sableye, that would be pretty fantastic. All right. Maybe I have a retreat, but I do need the energies. Oh, wow. What? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I have three Irida as well? What is happening? What is actually happening? All right. Well, here we go. Industrial Incisors for two. And then let's go Shivery Chill. How many energies? I could use Iron Hands as well, but I feel like the Greninja should be more impactful, right? Assuming the Greninja is here, which it might not be. It is, okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right, how many energies? Three, all right. So we're gonna Iridam. Now for you. And sure, let's grab you. <clears throat> And then we will discard one so we get the maximum recovery from the superior energy retrieval. I 100% do not expect to be going down in prizes anytime soon. I, this is greedy. Oh, I should have just sacrificed the Manaphy. Why did I not just get rid of the Manaphy? <laughs> That's actually very dumb on my part. I did not think that through. All I needed to do was promote the Manaphy, right? That is actually a really bad decision on my part overall. Uh, it's terrible. It's honestly quite terrible because if my opponent manages to kill my, my Baxcalibur, I will be in a little bit of trouble. So I don't see how my Greninja could go down next turn. So I'm gonna split the energies this way. And then in case something happens to my Baxcalibur, which if something happens to my Baxcalibur, then something could happen to my Greninja, but I'd rather something happen to my Greninja than to my Baxcalibur. All right, so could buy two potential attackers and they're also not promoting a... Oh, now you actually get to choose both prizes instead of one at a time. <laughs> nice, another improvement. Okay, they also don't get to promote the Comfey for... Uh, too easy to get to 10. The Colrus means they, they're not using Clara this turn, which is good news. They certainly could attack with Charizard somehow, but if they use Charizard to knock out my Reina Greninja, I am completely okay with that. So best case scenario for me is I just attack with Greninja again and I win the game basically, or, 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 I take a price here after my Greninja somehow goes down and then I just use Iron Hands to win the game. It's one of those two. That's gonna happen. I will win the game in two turns, however. And my opponent is aspiring at winning the game in maybe three turns in case they manage to take a KO here. So there's a Sableye, sure. That gets them to 10 cards now. They have already retreated. Can they find the energy and another switching card? They did just lost on an energy, so you would assume they have it. There's the attachment. Then, I mean, sure, I guess you KO B Barrel. That's your way. There's a Manaphy as well. That's fine. And no, they just go after the Manaphy. That's like the worst price. To get and they put the damage on the b-roll not even on the backs caliber so very odd choices that's for sure now they can't get a two price turn next turn that is completely okay all right so definitely gonna establish this friend and then definitely gonna iridom So I did prize my, I should have grabbed the Chimpa. I did prize my, um, 
my earthen vessel. So I'm just going to attach one here, one here, honestly, another one. Nah, I'll keep that one for now. And then I will use industrious incisors. I am mostly sort of looking for the lightning here. Nice. Okay. I'll establish that and then I might just be able to win um, next turn. All right, so I'll just do damage to the active, nothing to the mana fee, that's fine. I just wanted to take the price card. This, the only way my opponent survives within this turn is if they use um, <clears throat> Radiant Charizard. And then all I need to do is make sure I can get three energies powered up onto the Iron Hands, which I can now with the Earthen Vessel and the Super Rod. Can put three energies back, search for two with Chin Pao, search for another one with Earthen Vessel, power up, Irida Escape Rope. So, my opponent also has a play that I guess extends the game in the sense that they can go Sableye, Bench Sableye, Attach, and Roxanne. And then, geez, there's a fly here. And then KO. Oh, they can't KO Fridgebacks and B Brawl. They would probably just KO the B Brawl. I don't understand why they didn't, they didn't just KO the B Brawl anyways last turn. But it is what it is. Okay. That's a little icky. Maybe I should have just promoted the Chien Bao. That. Hmm. I'm, I'm sort of regretting that decision. I'm definitely not in, like, out of the woods yet here for sure. Definitely, definitely not. Maybe, maybe I messed up. Maybe there was a way to just power up the Iron Hands last turn and attack with that. That would have meant the game. Because then I'd be at one price card, two energies maybe on the Chimpo, or it would be easy to power up the Chimpo, and I would have won. So, neither game we got to feature Iron Hands. Uh, I think Iron Hands is not meant to be like the end all be all best attacker, best attacking Pokemon. It's just a good option to have, right? It opens up two price turns like this one, right? Where I would just be able to finish the game without regarding a massive combo like cross switchers and canceling colognes and whatnot. So Iron Hands, definitely a good Pokemon to have access to. Difficult to pull off, it seems, with this deck. The deck is inherently strong just because it's Chen Pao and Baxcalibur and has Greninja, all right? So Iron Hands just adds on top of that. But is it completely game-breaking? Didn't feel like it. Small sample size in the games I've played outside of um, this video. Iron Hands has felt pretty good to have as an option, but not the complete game. Like, I think, as I mentioned in my Iron Valiant video, I think Iron Valiant is a much more oppressive card to single price Pokemon uh, with big evolutions than Iron Hands does. But let me know your thoughts. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.